Hello and welcome to Woodworks. My name is John Hall and I'll be your host for today's program, which is a continuation of the last episode when we talked to some local luthiers about their craft and its relationship to the culture and community of Santa Cruz County. We're joined today by some of the same guests as last time, local craftsmen, luthiers who build high quality bespoke guitars here in Santa Cruz. Next to me is Rick Turner from Rick Turner Guitar Company. Next to Rick is Scott Walker, Walker Electric Guitars. We also have from last time, Eric Paulson from Guitar uh, Carter Paulson Guitars and Colin Alder from Cruise Tone Steel Guitars. In addition, this time, we are pleased to be joined also by Willie Carter from Carter Paulson Guitars. Welcome again, everybody, and welcome for the first time, Willie. I'd like to focus in today's program on the, the woodworking aspects of the luthier craft. But rather than jump straight into a discussion about particular types of wood or finishing products, let's start with a, a more general conversation about something that uh, mystifies me. And, and please understand that not only am I mystified by a whole range of things out there, <laughs> but I'm also not a musician. I'm just an amateur woodworker. And the question I have is that what, what makes one guitar worth or to the value of $30,000? I'm assuming that that's a fairly reasonable price for a high-end guitar, correct me if I'm wrong. But what's well, pretty up there. That's okay. Yeah. What, would, what, 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 what would be a high-end guitar price? $30,000 would okay. be a high-end guitar price. Okay, yeah. so, so yeah. let's go back into the question then. So what makes a guitar worth 30000 whereas another one could be worth, let's say, a thousand. Behind the question, obviously, is, is the, the question, what factors affect price, affect quality? I think once you get over about 10,000, you're looking at um, the degree of ornamentation and the name of the builder. Um, uh, the, the name of the, it's, it's like Picasso scribbling his name on a napkin and it's suddenly worth, you know, Brand recognition. $5,000, it's brand recognition, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Uh, you know, you're, once you get above about $5,000, I think we could all agree that, you know, materials are less of an issue. You know, we're, we're using the best spruce on an acoustic guitar, we're using the best spruce, the best rosewood, et cetera. And then um, a lot of it is the attention to detail. Um, I would think so. Some of it's guitar jewelry at that point. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And so protections change at certain price points too. Yeah. So okay. You um, you're kind of forced to step up. Right. And um, unless you were fortunate enough to establish your name prior to, yeah. to the, this renaissance we're in right now, where you could uh, okay. Get away with it. So for the amateur woodworker out there then who really would like to to experiment and get into making instruments, the important thing is for them to get to that ten thousand mark and then have their name recognized. Mm. That's a pretty lofty Not goal. Not so yeah. easy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You better I, I, be cranking I, I, out a lot of guitars to get the, to that yeah. lottery I'm saying right that there. Somewhat yeah. with tongue in cheek. Yeah. Um, so let's go back to the, the amateur woodworker who would like to, to make an instrument. What's the easiest way for somebody to, to make um, an instrument? Indeed, what instrument should they aim for if it's their first, their first attempt? I would say keep the ornamentation really simple. Concentrate on the basics. And, um, you know, there's a certain level of tooling that you've got to step up to to make things reasonably efficiently. But mm -hmm. if, we're, if our audience is already amateur woodworkers with home shops, Let's yeah, most, m most of the, the audience, I think they would have things like a, a drill press and a bandsaw and obviously a table saw and routers and, and whatever. Um, are there particular tools, cutting tools, shaping tools, jigs, fixtures that, that they would need specifically to make a guitar that they wouldn't have as an actual course in their, in their shop? 
Well, if they learn in Paracho, they'd have a knife. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and a single light bulb. A single light bulb <laughs> and a bandsaw. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's mattering amazing. on the electric guitars versus acoustic guitars, they're a little bit different with the tooling up for. With electric guitars, pretty much a router mm -hmm. and you know basic equipment. Uh, with acoustics, you do need some more molds and uh, bending equipment. Mm -hmm. But there's, you know, uh, general wood shop stuff. After that, there's plenty of mattering on your level of, you know, experience, uh, learning DVDs, uh, literature, mm -hmm. um, online stuff. Uh, there's a, you know, in the last five years, an explosion of material, you know, kind of the self-learning uh, style of, of Luthery is, is really accessible. Mm -hmm. So how should they start? What's the best way? I th pick an instrument that you love. Yeah. I think is, yeah. is the main thing, whether it's electric guitar or ukulele or, mm -hmm. or guitar. Right. And I think that that's, because you're going to run into challenges. And yeah. I think if it's something you're really interested in, you're mm -hmm. less likely to quit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so, so they, they picked an instrument, um, a ukulele. Mm -hmm. Where do they go from there? Read everything you can read. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of good books. Mm -hmm. uh, there are very good forums online. For ukulele, there's a ukulele underground, and there's a, a, a luthier's lounge section there. Uh, for acoustic guitars, there are several forums. There's the MIMF. There's the official luthier's forum, which is kind of a pretentious name, but what the heck. Um, and then there's a, there's a pile of books. Mm -hmm. uh, Go look for Stuart McDonald um, Guitar Shop Supply. Mm -hmm. They've got uh, incredibly uh, detailed books. They've got tools, specialized tools. Mm -hmm. um, what about kits? Should the should the beginner think of, think about a kit, or is that is that is that cheating? Willie and I disagree on that. I think that I don't know. We don't fully disagree, but. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think that it's it's not a bad way to get right into it. Mm -hmm. um, and if you don't want to be setting up to bending, to be bending sides and so on, you can do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think it depends on what you want, what your goal is. If you just mm -hmm. want to have an instrument that you made, s somewhat made, I think go go with the kit. But if you really want to learn the full, um, the full skill set and have the full experience of making a guitar, I think that, mm -hmm. or an, you know, a ukulele that you that you need to to step up and do some right. of the other things. You know, okay. Bending wood, I think, is is. Uh, is one of the best experiences, I think. I mean, you're really intimate with it. It's the, the aha yeah. moment when you Absolutely. see that wood band Absolutely. under your mm -hmm. under your hands yes. and it stays there. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that goes along with your patience with every other step. Mm -hmm. Because it does mm -hmm. take some patience. You learn a lot about yourself in this. But right. I, I think that, uh, you know, for me, I think that's what you're lacking with the kids. Okay. They're sitting there in the shop ready to go. And this is the fun bit now as far as the, the woodworker is concerned. What, what wood do I go out and look for? What, what woods? Um, should they be looking for? What woods go into the, the, the building of a, of a guitar? What woods do you like to work with? What woods go into different parts of the instrument? Um, and what do you look for when you're, when you're buying wood? Do you look for particular grain patterns, particular grain sizes, um, softwoods, hardwoods? Talk to me about woods. Seasoned, seasoned woods, seasoned I would wood, say. Yeah. You know, something that's stable, really. I mean, you can have the most amazing rosewood, but if it's not stable and ready to go, it's you're gonna have problems. So I would say, you know, my, my input would just be something that's stable, seasoned, and, uh, you know, it's not gonna move around on you. Mm -hmm. There are also excellent resources for guitar making wood. There's Luthier's Mercantile up in Healdsburg, Allied Luthery. Um, and then I get a lot of wood locally from Steve Jackal. Mm -hmm. You know, Jackal, he was an instrument builder for, for quite a while. A lot of and, uh, and he, you know, he knows the quality of the wood that I want mm -hmm. of the stuff that, that he stocks. Mm -hmm. I would usually suggest that, that um, for at least for your first couple of instruments, you stick to the traditional woods. If I'm talking about um, acoustic guitars, you know, mm -hmm. Indian rosewood and mahogany. And you have a reference point when you're comparing it to... So the traditional woods are rosewood? Rosewood, mahogany. mahogany. For back and sides. Yeah, for back yeah. and sides yeah. and mm -hmm. spruces for the tops. And I think that gives you a benchmark. Mm -hmm. One like of the funny the things is that rosewood's easier to bend than, than mahogany. Yes, that's true. The mahogany is one of the more difficult to woods to bend, yeah. you know, so... Are there any other traditional woods that will go into the, um, the instrument? Other part, the neck, for instance? Mahogany. mahogany. Okay. Yeah. Ebony. 
Where maples. Mm -hmm. A lot of maples yeah. are used for necks and, and uh, back and sides, tops, mm -hmm. you know, different uh, local woods, the myrtle, you know, the, the local stuff is, all, you know, it's always good, I think, to source locally. So it's all hardwood you're talking about? For the back and sides, generally. Yeah. For the tops, we'd go with, um, if, you, if you want local, there's some beautiful redwood, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, western red cedar, mm -hmm. uh, spruce is the traditional favorite. And um, we all have different spruces that we like. I, I favor Adirondack red spruce. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Can't miss that. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming that each wood would give a different tone to the instrument. If all things are equal. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> I guess there are, there, there are many yeah. other there it's are many like other cooking. variables. Would, yeah. Would affect. yeah. If you had the same recipe and you alter the recipe, you're yeah. going to see some differences. But if you know if you have two different recipes and with similar ingredients, it's hard to say what's making what yeah. mm -hmm. change. Yep. But, yeah. Okay. We but can compensate too. You know, if you if you want to, uh, the big thing for tops is the cross grain <laughs> stiffness. And the the funny thing is in the guitar business, top wood um, for acoustic instruments is graded strictly on appearance. Mm -hmm. And so you know, very fine grained very, very white spruce. Oh, it's beautiful. But I've seen some that, that's like shirt cardboard. Yes. Okay. And that's, so it's, it's, it's got a high grade and you pay a high price. It's not the best wood, so. Mm, that's yeah. true. Okay. You know what, guys, I've got a whole lot of questions here, but I'm becoming distracted by these beautiful instruments that I'm seeing that you've brought along with you and you've graciously brought those, brought those with you. What I would like to do now, forget the questions, I'd, I'd like each of you to just spend a few minutes talking about the, uh, the instruments that you brought along. And when you're talking, think about us, the amateur woodworkers, looking at this um, and, and listening to you, and try and make the, uh, the, the building of the guitar and the process that, you, that you, you're using kind of come alive by talking more about the woodworking aspects and bring in some of the things that we've just been talking about now, the types of wood. Um, the particular types of, um, of construction, construction techniques, um, etc. So let, let, let us let us see and possibly hear some of the um, uh, the unique and uh, quality products that you make here in Santa Cruz County. Who wants to go first? I'd like to point out it's not just wood. Um, Colin has quite a bit of uh, unique metalwork uh -huh. in his instruments and and. And they're very special mm. uh, from from that combination of wood and and uh, and aluminum. Who wants to go first? Rick. Okay. There you go. Um, koa, Hawaiian koa, book matched top, book matched back, um, book matched sides, all out of the same billet of wood. Um, the neck on this one is mahogany. Honduras mahogany that was salvaged from Bob Hope's poolside bar. Is that right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you can just imagine wow. the, the elbows that, that yeah. leaned on this at one time wow. or another. Uh, so I've got to ask, how did you come by that? Um, a friend of mine who was a, a wood broker uh, had been a cabinet maker and carpenter in Southern California, and he, uh, he scored this for me. Mm -hmm. I, I've got, I think I've got two necks left, and um, <laughs> I'm gonna charge a lot of money for them, mm. you know. <laughs> um, and then this one is, um, this is wood that was re in my shop, and uh, so we do a lot of our own wood processing. Mm -hmm. And then it's got the, the abalone, the, the New Zealand power shell mm -hmm. abalone on it. Ebony so fingerboard supported with carbon fiber. I've got a strip of carbon fiber in here from, from about here to here. Um, and the fingerboard itself is cantilevered, does not touch the top. And the carbon fiber makes it very, very stiff. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that's sort of my take on, on building acoustic instruments. And then well, on this electric, just, just quick, yes. Um, Coa is not an easily obtainable wood. No, and um, one of the biggest problems with Coa these days is the, uh, in Hawaii, as the, the shoots are growing, the pigs are eating them. And so, uh, you know, between the pigs and the cows in Hawaii, 
uh, the poor little koa trees don't have much of a chance unless mm -hmm. they're well fenced and so on. Um, it's not quite a CITES level uh, restricted wood, but the, but the restrictions on cutting it are pretty severe mm -hmm. in Hawaii. But there are some good suppliers uh, for it. Um, this I think came from Dagenhart at one point, and then it um, it came to me by way of John Reuter at the Roberto Van Luthery School in in uh, in Tempe, Arizona. Mm -hmm. uh, he brought it to my shop. He used to come to my shop every year to cut wood for the students until they got their own saw, and he ran this through the saw and then through my sander and it split. He was going to use it on a guitar. And I said, mine. <laughs> so, yeah. so I kept, I okay. kept this one for myself. Have you, have you made that for anybody in particular? Me. Okay. <laughs> I, do keep, I try to keep one every couple of years, okay. something or other. Okay. You know? um, I do, you know, I'm a musician, I play. Mm -hmm. And if I had these instruments back when I was a professional musician, I wouldn't have become a guitar maker. So mm. I had to start making them for myself. Okay. So. Cool. And this other instrument? This is the, uh, the guitar best known for being the one that uh, Lindsey Buckingham of Fleetwood Mac plays. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is his model. And in this case, it's a um, maple and rosewood laminated neck, um, a mahogany body, and um, veneered back of the peg head with his back strap overlay and uh, um, rosewood fingerboard on here and a little koa on the uh, on the peg head mm -hmm. and I've made about I think we've made about 450 of these over the years. Oh okay so that answers the question I was going to have and that is that you said it's Lindsay Buckingham so he hasn't specifically uh, you don't make this specifically for him he has bought one and now continues to buy. I did make, I made, I designed this guitar um, after meeting him and um, we had long talks about what he wanted in a guitar. And he wanted the, the, the warmth of a Les Paul and the clarity of a Stratocaster. And so my design goal was, and, and since he's sort of coming out of an acoustic background, I wanted something that from a distance kind of looked like an, a little acoustic guitar, but that he could go full bore with, mm -hmm. Fleetwood Mac. Mm -hmm. And um, when I delivered the first one to him right before the Tusk tour, um, it was quite something. He picked it up and played it for four hours or five hours, and then yelled to his uh, road crew, who said, leave the Les Paul and the Strat and the Ovation at home. This is all I need. So. And then Mick Fleetwood came and said, okay, how fast can we have a backup? Mm -hmm. So, and Lindsay has six of these now. Okay. And 15 other guitars that I've built for him mm. of different, different types, mm. so. Great. Very quickly, um, back to the wood and back to the construction. What types of wood do you use inside for the, for the bracing? Uh, this one has uh, spruce bracing inside and you know, you were going to ask about glue. Mm -hmm. uh, we're doing all of our acoustic body construction with hot hide glue now, the traditional, you know, 3,000 year old glue. Mm. Um, it works great. Mm -hmm. And it, um, it goes very hard, so it, it's acoustically very transparent. Now, is, is that glue capable of, of becoming uh, soft again and if, if you needed to, to do you need, repairs, you, you can steam you, you it, can, you yeah. can steam it and, and yeah. take the, take the, um, yeah. the pieces apart. Yeah, you can take joints apart, yes. Mm, okay. Yeah. And what about finishing? Uh, I do now, I do a combination of, of materials. I do a couple of coats of Smith clear penetrating epoxy sealer, um, do a very light sanding on that, and then a urethane isolator coat, and then polyester top coats. Uh, which are then um, buffed to a standard okay. and buffed to a high gloss. So, great, thanks, Rick. Scott. All right. Well, <clears throat> I brought in a couple pieces of wood, turning into guitars. Talking about wood a little earlier. Mm -hmm. Some uh, spalted maple burl. That's beautiful. Local stuff. That's beautiful. Uh, book match. You know, mm -hmm. when Rick's talking about book match, you know, that's a book match, and you could book match it this way too. And so. Um, some local uh, maple burl, and then our local uh, sycamore, which is uh, 
a really pretty unique wood uh, uh, that it's local here. Mm -hmm. um, lace wood looks real similar, mm -hmm. and, and it's often confused with this, but this is the, the California sycamore. Uh, as, and again, it's the book match, you know, mm -hmm. so you get that mirror image yep. on the tops. Um, and, you know, most, most instruments have that book match thing going on. It's a way to, yep. to create a, an effect. And I think with a lot of my guitars, you know, going for uh, a wood, you know, unique woods, um, something that's got a, some, uh, you know, something that you're not just going to paint black and, you know, that's kind of like the niche that well, a lot of us go in is, is, you know, really showcasing the woods. I mean, Mother Nature has mm -hmm. incredible uh, gems out there. So this is a this is actually a, a book matched body. It's a, it's split down the middle, glued together. Um, uh, probably five or six years ago, there was a big storm in Belize and uh, a wood salvage guy ended up bringing back a few trees of this uh, that had blown down in the storm, you know, and and I you know, I was like, I want one of those trees, you know, so of this figured mahogany. Mm -hmm. So this this uh, flamed mahogany, which is, you know, rare. And that's one of the things that, you know, I think we were talking about pricing is unique woods that have a story. Bob Hope's, you know, pool. I mean, that stuff, you know, it's cool to have an instrument with some history, yeah. you know, some woods. And I think that's what that I try to do is I try to hand select woods, you know, at 20 guitars a year, I can do that. You know, I can, you know, I don't, I, I can find the, the piece. So, mm -hmm. you know, part of my pricing is, is the customized, you know, I spend a lot of time with the customer going over every detail of the instrument, creating it for them, with them, their lifestyle in mind, their amplifier, their music, what they're doing, what what sounds do they hear, what mm -hmm. kind of style, mm -hmm. you know, so my pricing has a lot of that in mind, you know, really cater to the customer and right. what they're doing and build an instrument for them. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a, uh, a rosewood neck on this um, and it's, God, uh, my thing with this is it's got a, a hidden tenon up into the, that goes under this pick guard and the pickups are actually mounted to the tenon. So when the, the neck is bolted on here, but it's actually runs up into here and uh, kind of one of my philosophies on that is when you tap tune, uh, when you tap on a piece of wood, you know, you're always here, guitar builders are, you know, listening to the wood, you know, and to get that spot is usually, you know, somewhere proportionately about, you know, 15% down from the, the length of the wood. And that's where, the, where you get that, that harmonic mm -hmm. note is, is right there. And so my philosophy is actually bolting it, the neck on at that spot. At the, mm -hmm. on that harmonic node. And then with the pickups screwed down to the neck, um, help kind of just translate some of the energy into the, into the, you know, amplifier. And then I do a lot of uh, different electronics, uh, unity gain buffer and booster that Rick's helped mm -hmm. me on a lot, trying to uh, kind of like what these guys do with the bracing is it, it, it you have the option to give it a little bit of a unique voice with with the electronics. Right. Got it. Okay, I'd like to give the other guys time to uh, yep. to do something similar and explain. This. So um, Eric and uh, and Willie, um, tell us a bit about the uh, the guitars that you make at oh. Carter <coughs> Paulson. Me. Well, we're unique on this panel because we work together, <laughs> and uh, so there's a bit of both of us in, in these guitars. Yeah. Um, the materials on this one, it's Indian rosewood with the mahogany neck, um, Brazilian rosewood for the fingerboard uh, and bridge and overlay, uh, spruce top with the sunburst finish. Um, I think it's Brazilian binding on this one, I don't remember. We have four different models and we, we have uh, letter designations for them and they all, and this yeah. particular guitar is a T and it was, I designed this to, uh, you know, people like larger guitars 
but mm -hmm. they don't like you know they're difficult to play they're yeah. not comfortable to play so yeah. I made this one with the you know see the upper bots quite quite a bit smaller than you usually mm -hmm. see in the, so it's, it feels like a much smaller yeah. guitar so that was part of the philosophy there one thing I was going to add is one thing that we do in our guitars that kind of <laughs> adds value to them when you talk about pricing and, and setting them apart is we make all the little bits that go into this like we make the little purples out of koa and black fiber and and you know, laminate them and rip them and, and produce them in our own shop. Um, and so every piece of the guitar, every piece of wood is, is chosen as a match set for an individual guitar for a particular reason. Okay. And we make some of these purples out of the same sycamore that Scott uses and, and that Rick uses. Right. Colin, to, to give us just a, a brief description about his okay. instrument. Well, uh, the cruise tone uh, electric lap steel guitar I uh, developed about five years ago. And I was uh, talking with Rick Turner in his shop one day looking at the uh, pickup that he had. And this is a pickup that he built. And I said, he had it on a guitar. And I said, that looks like it ought to belong on a lap steel. And uh, he encouraged me to uh, developed the instrument and with his help and mentoring, I spent about a year and a half doing research and development. And I went on one of the forums that we discussed here. Uh, Steel Guitar Forum is an international uh, community that's online. And there is an incredible amount of information on there and those people will share it uh, every bit as much as Rick shared his time and his expertise. And I just tried to find out what steel guitar players liked in terms of tone and what components they thought made a good sounding instrument. And then I took that and researched design of uh, older steel guitars and uh, took, uh, I developed this shape that comes somewhat, it's an offshoot from a Gibson guitar that was uh, built in the late 40s called the Ultratone. And this uh, shape is different than any other steel that's in production except for that Gibson from that time. <laughs> and I just liked the look of it. And I, uh, then uh, at, also at uh, Rick's suggestion, I went with a lot of aluminum, which is also traditional for steel guitars. And I designed a lot of it on the computer and found uh, machine shops and uh, local machinists to do some of the work. All of these, uh, all of the parts like the bridge and the nut are uh, custom made rather than off the shelf parts. And that's where we must end today's program. We hope you enjoy the show and will join us for the next episode of Woodworks. Goodbye.